and welcome to a brand new hour of Happening Now. I'm Heather Childers in for Jenna Lee. Happy Friday, Heather. Yeah, you too. Nice to be here. I'm John Scott. Happening Now, bringing the terrorists who killed four Americans in Benghazi to justice. It's been nearly a year since Ambassador Chris Stevens and three other Americans were killed in the September 11th attack on the U.S. consulate. But special operators who have tracked these suspects for months and passed along their whereabouts to the White House wondering what the holdup has been in getting these bad guys. This, as Fox News is learning, that the majority of America's response team on the ground in Libya is leaving the country. Adam Housley live in our Los Angeles newsroom in a Fox News exclusive. So, Adam, where are we now in the investigation? You have a lot of stuff to cover here. Yeah, you know, Heather, it's interesting. These same special operators say the administration is going to have to do something by September 11th. There'll be too much pressure. But what is happening right now is the group of part of other American special operators that work under 1208. It's a congressional funding, basically, that allows the Department of Defense to put military in foreign countries to help them train people to fight terrorism. They're in there in Libya. They've been there since last November. We're told a majority of this team is being pulled out. But they're also there not just to train as part of their cover. They're there to find, fix, and finish those responsible for the attack uh, that happened last September 11th. Now, one source insists that much of the information on Benghazi suspects has been passed along to the White House after being vetted by the Department of Defense and the U.S. State Department. And at least one recommendation for direct action on a Benghazi suspect was given to the president back on August 7th. Also, another special forces leader tells, or we were told by a special force, that special forces leader literally yelled at the US, acting U.S. ambassador in Libya, uh, William Roebuck, at the time, that was back in January, that he was upset that the fact that he, these men were there, they had all this information and nothing was being done. We've also been told that by a special operator that another special forces leader uh, was there when Carter Ham, the former leader of AFRICOM, gave information to the, the man who, follow, who would follow Roebuck. Uh, Lawrence Pope came in as the acting ambassador after Roebuck, and that, again, nothing was done after Carter had given him a plan on how things could have gone and how these men could have possibly been captured. So, Heather? Adam, all right, bottom line, we know where the suspects are. We have people on the ground. What is preventing the U.S. from making a move? Well, right now it's insecurity. That's the big issue here. Uh, in the last few weeks, we've had a massive prison break that's been talked about, but there's been a few other smaller prison breaks also that really uh, helped feed the insecurity in the area. There's been kidnappings, there's been killings uh, in the east where Benghazi is located in Derna. Uh, significant insecurity there. The Muslim Brotherhood working with uh, Ansar al Sharia is really putting a significant threat to this very, very new government in Libya. Uh, we do know that these men who were there to train and track the two different things they were there to do were uh, actually. Uh, in a, their own camp, help funded by U.S. taxpayer dollars, and the new Libyan security chief came in and basically about a week ago told them to get out. So they had to go back to their villa, and they were basically uh, sitting in limbo, uh, not training Libyans any longer. So uh, a lot of insecurity there, a lot of issues going on, uh, and it's really curious to see what's going to happen again. The administration is going to have a lot of pressure as we approach September 11th, but these men have said, and we reported this three months ago, as you might know, and some other media outlets have come out since then, that the first information on suspects was given to U.S. leaders last November. Then they returned, checked a second set of boxes, and as the quote was, handed them the information on a silver platter in January, and still no one's been arrested and no one's been held accountable. Uh, and we do know, of course, the DOJ did file charges against a number of suspects a couple of weeks ago. Heather? Man, last, first information given to them last November. Adam, thank you so much. Yes. We appreciate it. All right.